Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have got an idea about the human male reproductive system, let us talk about the reproductive system in females. So now we know that how the male germ cells are produced and how they enter the female body. Now let us say how are the female germ cells produced. So let us first understand the different parts of the female reproductive system. It consists of mainly a pair of ovaries. Ovaries are the most important part of the female reproductive system. So here you can see these are the two ovaries, one and two. So ovaries are the places where uh, the eggs are produced. Eggs are the female germ cells. So the eggs or sometimes they are also known as ovum or ova. So these eggs or ovum are produced inside the ovaries. Then there is a fallopian tube. So here this you can see this is the fallopian tube which is connected which starts from the ovary and connects it's somewhere here. So what is there we can see. Next is uterus. So this is the uterus. So uterus is the place which actually holds the baby. You would have seen that in case of human beings when a baby is when reproduction how reproduction takes place. First, this fertilization will happen. Now, once a baby is created, the baby remains inside the womb of the mother for nine months. So, this is the place which actually keeps the baby for nine months. So, uterus is a bag-like structure which holds the baby. So, this structure, this entire structure is the uterus. So, the fallopian tube actually connects each ovary to the uterus. So, that is why this is a fallopian tube. This is also the fallopian tube. Next is cervix. So, here you can see the uterus ends up in cervix. And this cervix then opens to the exterior through vagina. So, vagina is the opening outside. Right? So, as I said before also, like in females in their, as they reach their teenage or when they reach their puberty, the menstrual cycle starts. So, in menstrual cycle what happens? There is bleeding through the vagina. So, this is the opening through which the bleeding happens every month during the menstrual cycle. So, this vagina will go to the cervix. From the cervix will start the uterus and then from the uterus on both sides will be the fallopian tube and the fallopian tubes will be connected to ovaries on each side. Clear? Okay. So roughly this is the um, structure. Now let us look at the function of each part. So let us first talk about the ovaries. So let us first talk about the most important part that is the ovaries. So there are two ovaries, one on each side of the uterus. So by now you know where is the uterus located, right? So this is this is the uterus. So on each side of uterus you have one ovary. So what is the purpose of ovary? They produce the female sex cell. The female sex cell is known as ovum whose plural is ova. So sometimes it is also known as egg cell. So ovum or egg. So they produce the female sex cell. They also secrete the female hormones estrogen and progesterone. Like how in males you have the male hormone testosterone which is produced by the testis. Similarly in case of females these hormones estrogen and progesterone are produced by the ovaries and these hormones are responsible for the secondary sexual characters in females. For example, the breast development and the onset of menstrual cycle, all these things are governed by these female hormones. Next is the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube is also known as the oviduct. It exists in pairs. So fallopian tube also it exists in pairs. There is one fallopian tube here, another one here. So they originate from uterus and extend up to each ovary. So from uterus one fallopian tube goes this side, the other one goes this side connecting the ovaries. So what is the purpose of fallopian tube? They receive ovum from the ovary. So the ovary produces the ovum. Fallopian tube takes the ovum out from the ovary. So that is its function. So that is why you see that the terminal part of the fallopian tube, that is this portion, is funnel shaped with finger like projections. So here you have finger like projections on the fallopian tube. So these projections actually pushes the ovum into the fallopian tube. So when the ovum is here, these projections will help the ovum to come out into the fallopian tube. 
Next is the uterus. It is a pear-shaped muscular hollow structure. As you can see in the picture. So this is the place where the fetus develops. Now you would have seen that sometimes we use different names. Sometimes we call, uh, we use the word zygote. Sometimes we use the word embryo. Sometimes we use the word fetus. So what is the difference between all of them? Now as soon as the fusion between the male and the female cell takes place, the one that is formed is a single cell zygote. Then that zygote undergo many number of divisions and form a multi-celled embryo. Now a matured embryo with certain features is known as fetus. So the fetus actually develops here. That means the baby actually develop, he remains here for 9 months. Then cervix, it is the narrow lower part of the uterus. So the terminal part of the uterus somewhere here. And the last one, vagina. It is a tube-like structure. Sperm discharge occurs here. It acts as birth canal. That means this is vagina. As I said, now when the uh, intercourse happens, what happens? The penis gets inserted into this vagina. So the penis enters here and then the penis secretes the sperms here. So this is the place where the sperms, through which the sperms enter inside the female body. This tube also acts as birth canal because when, as I said, the baby remains here and the baby remains here for 9 months. Now how does the baby come out? The baby comes out through this vagina. Right, so that is why it is also known as birth canal. Clear? So these are the different parts of the female reproductive system. So let us now see how are the female sex cells, that is the ova or uh, the egg cells are produced. So the female sex cells are known as ova or ova. Now ova are produced by epithelium in ovary. As I said, inside the ovary, uh, is present a lining of epithelium. So that epithelium produces the ovum or ova. Now can you imagine when this formation of ova starts in a female? Many of you might guess that maybe during puberty when the reproductive tissues start functioning. But no, it is not like that. The formation of ova actually starts in a female fetus even before birth. That means when a girl child is not even born, not even born, the girl child is still inside its mother's uterus, that time itself the formation of ova starts. So that means when a female child is born at the time of birth, there are almost 2 to 3 lakhs of immature eggs lying inside its ovary. Just imagine, that, that is so interesting, right? So when a small baby is born, just at the time of birth, there are lacks of immature eggs present inside the ovary. Now when do these eggs mature? They mature only when the female reaches the adolescence period. That means when the female reaches the puberty, when its menstrual cycle starts, during that time these eggs start getting matured. So what happens? Every month during the every month one mature egg egg is gets released from the ovary. So that is how the production of egg happens. So this is how it takes place. So here you can see as I said just now that there are so many in my, not only one egg there are several ova which are present inside this ovary. But after reaching puberty Every month, one egg becomes matured and that egg will be released out of the ovary. So this release of egg, this release of egg or ovum from the ovary is known as ovulation. So every month, one egg will be, one matured egg will get released from the ovary. Now, now the funnel shaped end of the fallopian tube with small projections will push the egg out of the ovary. This release of egg from ovary is known as ovulation. So it is a very important process. Clear? So now these immature eggs start, how do these immature eggs mature? Now the, this maturation process takes place under the influence of hormones which are controlled by the pituitary gland. We have spoken about pituitary gland in our previous lesson. It is the master gland of the body. 
it controls the secretion of sex hormones by the other gland, glands. So these pituitary gland actually helps in the maturation of these immature eggs present inside the ovary. So it is seen that one matured egg is released from either of the ovaries at every 28 days. So this process of ovulation will happen every 28 days. So that means every 28 days one ovum is released. So every 28 days ovulation will take place inside the body of a female. So this is how female sex cells will be produced. Clear? So now we know how the male cells are produced. Now we know how the female cells are produced. So now what we are yet to study, how the fusion between the male sex cell and the female sex cell actually takes place. So this is how a female sex cell looks like. This is how an ovum looks like. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.